Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll start a whole new series here based on your suggestions. I said I was going to wait until maybe later this week to go, so go ahead and start them, but looking at this one and the newer set of suggestions, there's some pretty good stuff, so wanted to go ahead and share all of the new stuff with you here. And again, I will come some of the, the older suggestions as well, so be on the lookout for those too. This one is pretty fascinating because if those of you out there have this fear of insects, which I know a lot of you do, and in some cases I do too, depending on the type of insect, then this one will absolutely make your spine crawl when it comes to its ickiness. Like this is something that is a stuff of nightmares, and it is instantly reminded me of something from the movie The Mist, which is a really good movie if you haven't had a chance to see that either. Uh, deals with a lot of cryptid-like monsters coming out of a strange mist. So this one goes by various names. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and just call it the giant mosquito, but if it had to go by one name, I guess that's the umbrella name of them all, it's this. It's the Ave Rasboro and then the second word is galley nipper which you're looking at a picture of here in essence it's just a giant mosquito that's all it is variations as to its size come into play too but if you were to just take the tiny mosquitoes that you and i see on a daily basis but increase it to either the size of a hawk or even larger, that's in essence what you have here. Again, it goes by various different names. I'm going to highlight some of those uh, names here too, so here's all the info. So what is this Averasboro galley nipper or the giant mosquito? Well, if you go by the legends tied to it, it's a creature of some sort that originated here in America most recently in North Carolina, if you can believe it, but also throughout various tales of Native Americans, a lot of mythological tales, in fact. First, let's start about the North Carolina aspect. You would have to go to about the 1800s, the time of the wild frontier, to start seeing more information about this, including its origins. This creature, by the way, all it is, again, just take your average mosquito, increase it exponentially to the size of a hawk, and you have what it is. Um, it's 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 exactly the same thing. It has wings, it has the same legs as a mosquito, it has of course its protruding needle. Everything is all the same. Now as far as this uh, origin, the set of origins there in North Carolina, apparently there used to be a town called Averasboro that existed sometime in the 1800s, mid 1800s or so to be exact. Uh, not much else exists for that town today. Apparently, it's just completely gone other than past records. These records showcase um, in f that, that there was some buildings there within that town, 13 of 14 of them, and one of them contained a very interesting skeleton. This was a skeleton of a bird that was shot and then put back together, displayed on the top of a ceiling somewhere. But, interestingly enough, its head, or the part of its head involving its beak, was replaced uh, with something else. In this case, it was with a long scrimshot piece of something that made it look like a large needle. Everything else stayed the same though, pretty much. And the whole purpose of this is because those uh, frontiersmen there at that time stated and hung this with the words, the Aves Rosboro Galley Nipper, again Aves Rosboro being the name of that town at that time, they hung this as a warning of some sort because apparently they had come across these swarms of mosquitoes that were so large that at first they could be mistaken for birds but then thereafter much to their horror of course seeing that they are in fact giant mosquitoes that's why they made this thing there so I guess anybody that was coming into that town for work maybe coming to that town for visitation touristy type stuff they would see this and then that would be their warning as to look out for these giant mosquitoes so that's pretty interesting I, I thought that caught my eye when I was looking at that information because why else would there be some Thing so weird like this hanging on a display other than a warning of some sort and then um, also this was so much in the environment there this with regards to these warnings the news of it so widespread that other men that work there continue uh, in this case continuously on the timber side the ones that cut all those giant trees 
they in turn would always keep an eye out for these alleged giant mosquitoes. So pretty interesting stuff there. Now as far as the Native American side and its tails tied to it, yes, uh, there are indeed two variations of it. One of them is of a giant mosquito, this one far larger than a hawk, in this case a little bit larger than the man himself. It goes by the name of Roteo. And it was described by a uh, Native American chief, a Tuscarora chief by the name of Elias Johnson. He was someone that was around the 1800s or so, and he described it as follows. He said that it flew about with vast wings, making a loud noise with a long stinger, and, hum and on whomever it lighted, it sucked out all of the blood and killed them. Many warriors were destroyed in this way, and all attempts to subdue it were in vain. This was his description, an actual chief, an American chief description of this giant mosquito. In this case though again it was something that was larger than a man and so it was something that was much feared because it could actually carry a person straight from the ground and then take it back to its lair. Um, also what was interesting about this description is if you killed these mosquitoes you didn't just outright uh, stop the danger with that giant mosquito. Instead you created a whole new dangerous situation because apparently smaller mosquitoes would come out of that giant mosquito after it was dead. So imagine that scenario. You're shooting this thing, whatever it is. You've got a gun, a shotgun, or you've got arrows, and then you think you hit it, and then it settles on the ground, and you think it's over, but nope. Instead, smaller mosquitoes come out. And in fact, according to that Native American legend, that's how small mosquitoes today exist. They all came from from this Roteo, whatever this giant mosquito was there. And then there's yet another Native American version, in this case a Cherokee one. In this case, it's not a mosquito, but more along the lines of a giant yellow jacket wasp of some sort. This one, too, was also larger than a man, large enough to be able to pick them up and preferred children, in fact, because of their small size and carried them back into their lair. Um, there's even reference to it with regards to a cave located also, again, in North Carolina. The cave has a really unique name, I can't even say it, but I think it's it's spelled T-S-G-A-G-N-U-N-Y-I, however that said, but it literally means where the yellow jacket was. So again, in reference to these giant creatures, these giant insect-like creatures of some sort that, 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 that it inhabited that area. In fact, there's a saying that was described of them from the Native Americans said the hunters built fires around the hole so that smoke filled the cave and smothered this great insect and multitudes of the smaller ones and then they escaped and increased until now the yellow jackets we know of today are all over the world this also has references to being able to um, shoot kill whatever is the case these giant yellow wasps they were called by the way a name called Yulagu, I believe that's how it's stated, that was their name, their version of it. But if they were killed, then smaller wasps came out of the creature and they in turn inhabited the earth, like they are the ones that we know of as of today. One other report too, in this case a lumber worker, a guy by the name of Red Saunders, he was one of the few people that survived an encounter with a galley nipper. Because according to the folklore tied to the Avis Rosporo galley nipper, if you get stung by it, it's pretty much death. I mean, it's a giant mosquito. Uh, the poison tied to it or whatever is the case tied to that needle, it can pierce your arm all the way through, let alone imagine if it starts piercing your head. And then also it can suck the blood out of a person in one big giant gulp. Well apparently this man, whoever he was, Red Saunders, had an encounter and it was uh, something that he survived because apparently there was a gigantic bite on his arm of some sort and it was attributed, I don't know if he did it or others that reportedly seen it, but they attributed it to this galley nipper and he was a survivor. But others have stated that it was actually a burn of some sort that was caused by a hot coal. For whatever reason to this very day his name Red Saunders is tied to this galley nipper. So. But that's it. That's all the information really associated with it. One last thing too, you can see the influences in the film 
the mist you're looking at one of the pictures here i mean they had that disgusting creature of some sort that landed on that poor girl's neck and then ended up uh stinging her that was instantly reminded of this very same creature when i was reading about this galley nipper because here you have a situation where something is almost the size of a, of a bird of some sort but it's insect like and it has all the icky characteristics of uh, in this case of a mosquito of some sort so um, if you wanted again to have a chance to see some really fascinating cryptids check out that movie if you haven't highly highly recommended so all right everybody thanks again as always take care